If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. What is the craziest paranormal experience you've had? We were visiting my in-laws around Christmas and we were chatting in their den, having some drinks and catching up. They had a Christmas tree in the corner of the den. Nobody was sitting near it. My husband and father-in-law were sitting in lounge chairs and I was sitting with my mother-in-law on a couch on the opposite side of the tree. The two dogs were napping between us. We were all at least six feet away from the tree. All of a sudden their Christmas tress begins to violently shake. Like someone grabbed the trunk and was shaking dust off of it. A few ornaments fell to the ground and then it stopped. It shook for a good 10 seconds. The thing is, we were the only four in the house, the dogs were sleeping on the couch with us. The tree had been up for at least a week so no woodland creatures hiding in it and nothing else in the house shook. No glass clinking, no other rumbling sounds, just the tree. We checked the news to see if there was an earthquake, we checked online, pre-smartphones, and the newspapers and no reports of an earthquake. We also live in an area where earthquakes are rare. So I have no clue what shook the damn tree. We all saw it, the dogs slept through it. They did not give AF. High school girlfriend says she saw an old man in her house in the study. I laughed it off because her house was no older than 20 years old and how could it be haunted? I jokingly said she saw a wooden carving her parents had that resembled Jesus because she described the man of having a big white beard. A few weeks later I was walking from the stairs and into the kitchen where she was sitting, out of the corner of my eye I see an older man sitting at the head of the table in the dining room. I tell her but have to rule out my claim as the seed of belief may have been planted in my head. Months later her friend from Brazil was visiting. My girlfriend and I are fooling around upstairs and her friend burst through the door crying. In Portuguese my girlfriend asks what's wrong and her friend says she was listening to music with headphones walking around on the main floor when she ran into an old man with a white beard in the study. There was absolutely no way my girlfriend told her friend as she wasn't a believer in the paranormal and didn't make a big deal about it when she told me. To this day it is the one case in my life where I have to truly believe we all saw something in that house. I had a dream that I was at this cottage party, though I didn't recognize anyone there, but I knew them. All of a sudden, someone is knocking on the door and about 20 people crowd around it. I'm walking up and then everyone turns to look at me saying they're here for you. I'm like fuck this no thank you, but I still go and walk up. It's this old lady kind of lying on the ground, as if she crawled up there. She's got stringy long hair and white eyes. I'm like no thank you good day ma'am. But I somehow feel comforted. I leave her at the door and walk to my room at the cottage and there's this old man sitting in my bed. I'm like okay hey. He's like, someone died recently in your life and you didn't get to say goodbye. Now is your chance. I look out the window and he's also there. I again feel comforted. Then my friend's dog woke me up. I definitely know this was about my friend who had passed away a month before. She had stage 4 stomach cancer and died within a month of knowing. It's crazy what our subconscious can do. Oh boy, my time to shine. Just thinking about what happened still kind of horrifies me. It was August of last year, I went over to a friend's house to stay the night. Only people there were me, my friend M, his GFA, and my friend at the time N, now my GF. It was 2.30 at night, M was laying down for a bit, A and N were chilling in the living room, and I went outside on my own to have a smoke. After I spark it up, I'm looking across the street from M and A's house, and right behind a small concrete brick wall I notice a head that looked like a straight shadow slightly poking above the wall, looking at me. I thought it was just someone being really weird until I put two and two together. There's a street light shining directly on where this thing is and it still looks like it's complete shadow. I was smoking my cigarette and watching this thing, making sure that I didn't take my eyes off of this thing, and it's just kind of watching me and bouncing back and forth, slowly getting faster as I smoke. By the time I'm done, this thing looks like it's doing a ritual dance or some shit with how fast it was going. I put out my smoke and slowly start backing up to the front door. When I know I'm there, I fumble for the doorknob for a few seconds and as soon as I get a firm grip on it, that thing stops dead in its tracks. For what feels like an eternity I'm standing there in a staring contest with it, and slowly it starts creeping towards the side of the wall. Only then do I decide to nope the fuck out of there, burst the door open, and slam it shut behind me making sure to lock it. Scare the shit out of my friends when for like a solid 10 minutes, I'm just constantly peeking through the windows looking like I just had a run-in with death itself. Eventually I explain what happened to them and confirm they were all still inside the house like when I went outside, we all collectively decided that we didn't need sleep that night anyway. It never showed up again throughout the night. Didn't even bother looking over in the area that I saw it the next morning, just wanted nothing to do with it. 
still don't know what exactly I saw that night, and I don't want to know. I'm no stranger to the paranormal, have had experiences with it all my life, so not a lot of it scares me, but whatever I saw that night, I could tell just from a glance that it was purely malevolent, and it absolutely terrified me. I grew up in the countryside on a reservation. The house I grew up in isn't very far from the deep res, where some natives still practice the old ways and tell stories about stick Indians. Every now and then we could see moving neon green and white lights at night that hovered in the area where these old school natives live. Never was sure what they were, but it was high enough to see for miles. My family never spoke about it, but we knew to never go to that area. One day I wanted to hang out under our tree outside and read a book because it was so nice out. I took my book and blanket, and then did my thing. I started hearing sounds coming from that part of the res but couldn't figure out what it was. I tried to focus on it, so I laid on my back while looking up at the sky. Still couldn't figure it out. Then it became dead quiet, no birds chirping, no bugs buzzing, and the wind stopped making its sound via trees and brush. By the time I realized how dead silent it was, I saw a huge green hand above my face, frantically waving at me. I was supposed to be home alone. It didn't last very long, and I jumped up to run, but nothing was there. By the time I got up, the silence was gone and my dog ran up beside me going nuts. My uncle told me he's seen alien-like demons in that area after I told him what happened. He told me not to go outside by myself again because it sounded like they wanted me. A few years later, my younger cousin decided to go against what everyone warned him about and went out to the area in the middle of the night because he wasn't scared. He didn't return until the next day, and he's never been the same since, he's now an alcoholic who isn't mentally there. He's only 25. This sounds crazy but is 100% true. I used to live in a mobile home trailer park growing up. There was a hallway that went from one end of the trailer to the other, with the bedrooms coming off it on one side. My bed was on the wall opposite the hallway, so I could see into the hallway but not down either side. When I was about maybe 6 to 8 years old, if I stayed awake after my dad went to sleep and stared at the doorway I would start to be able to make out a hand stretching from beyond the doorway in the hall, from the right side of the door to the left. The longer I looked the more of the hand would appear until eventually over the course of a few minutes I could see a a red and white striped shirt slash sweater sleeve. If I continued to stare, after a longer period, the body of a boy would appear in the doorway. I specifically remember hiding under the covers most nights when this would happen, mostly at the first sight of him. I was never antagonized further than him slowly moving, facing my bed, from the right side of the door to the left, and if I continued to stare he would eventually disappear beyond the left threshold. We moved out of that trailer into a home when I had just turned 9 and that was the end of it. I never really thought about it, and I never told my dad or anyone else about it because by that time I had already chalked it up to just seeing things, and I thought it was my imagination, I'm sure it probably was. About 15 to 20 years later, my dad and I were talking about his best friend that had lived next door, but sadly just passed away. We started talking about our trailer and the older lady that had moved in after us. My dad said something like funny enough, dad's friend, told me a few years ago that that woman used to see a little boy in a red and white shirt, like a ghost or something. I was obviously taken about and told him about what I had seen almost every night for a few years and we were both just a bit shocked at what that might mean. Never experienced anything else, but that completely stumps me. There is a haunted road near where I live. Numerous people have seen the ghost car. The first time I saw it I was driving and my mom was dosing off in the passenger seat. I see a cloud of dust in a large, old, black car speeding out of a road on my right. I just know he is going to exit that road at the same time I am passing by that road. We are going to collide. So I slam on the brakes. Don't even look in the rear view mirror first I just lock it up. We come to an abrupt halt, mom comes awake. The car is gone. No dust cloud coming from the road on my right, no black car. I am shaking asking repeatedly where the car went. She just laughs and says you saw the ghost car. This happened a few years back and I still think about it pretty often, even though I wasn't the one who ever saw anything. Kind of a long story, so here we go. So, just a little backstory, here. I had just moved in with an old girlfriend and she had been complaining to me for a week or two about some creepy feelings and sounds she was experiencing while I was working my night shift at a new job. She was also having bad nightmares and just wasn't sleeping very well. Now, this is a new apartment for us and she is kind of easy to scare, so honestly, I didn't really think much of it. New place and new job, could just be stress, right? I did still believe her, because I must admit that I had felt pretty fucking creeped out in that apartment myself on a few occasions. 
but I wasn't going to tell her that because the last thing I wanted to do was freak her out and then leave her alone all night. So I have a day off and she is out running some errands. Meanwhile, my buddy Alex stops by to see the new place and have a beer or two. We have the place to ourselves. So we are chatting and he's sitting on the couch facing the hallway, I'm sitting to his right facing my front door with my head turned to my left towards him. I'm in the middle of a sentence when all of a sudden he gasps and jumps up from the couch and exclaims someone just walked into your bathroom. And he is visibly freaked out. Alex is not a very animated guy and his reaction generally rattled me a bit. Also, we are in a basement appointment and this isn't the nicest side of town, so my first thought was a break-in. So we both just kind of freeze there and look into the hallway for maybe 5 to 7 seconds and listen for movement. Nothing. I say, you're sure you saw something? I didn't hear anything. And he looks at me and just says without a doubt, he's fucking in there. So I get loud and start telling this guy he needs to get the fuck out of my apartment, we're gonna call the cops, we're gonna fuck him up, the whole shebang. All the while we are stocking up with whatever is best suited for blunt force discouragement within our arm's reach, a longboard and three wood, I believe. We give each other the let's do this. Look and we jump around the hallway corner into the doorway of the bathroom and. There is nothing there. At all. It is completely silent except for Alex muttering what the Under his breath, I tear open the shower curtain, nothing. I look at the bathroom window, locked. I look towards the bedroom that the intruder would have come from, door closed. When I go into the room the window is locked. We are still completely alone in the apartment. Alex looks at me and nervously laughs and asks what the He then turns completely white and promises me that he saw something. It's at this time that I first told him what my GF was experiencing. He explains that what he saw was a solid black mass that walked past the doorway he was facing and there is no way it was an exterior shadow or anything like that. He also immediately identified it as a he, which I remember thinking was kind of odd. He also mentioned that seeing him filled him with anxiety and dread like something bad is about to happen. He sits on the couch and finishes his beer without taking his eyes off the hallway and leaves about 5 minutes later. He never came back to that apartment. I decided not to tell the GF because she was really freaked out already and I didn't want to scare her with what I thought at the time could have been explained away somehow. Fast forward about 3 weeks. It's my night off and I'm gonna stay up and get some gaming in. The GF has to work the next day so she goes to bed early and I come in to tuck her in. We chat for a bit and I lean in to kiss her goodnight and as I lean down she bolts up, gasps and points towards the bathroom down the hall and shouts a man just went into our bathroom. I look down the hall and she repeats herself. I run down the hallway and round the corner into the bathroom and. Same fucking thing. Nothing. Silent. I just look up the hall to her and say there's nothing here. She turns white, she's totally freaked out, crying, saying she saw that same figure in her dreams, saying it watches her while she showers and uses the bathroom, saying it hates me and knows when I'm not around. Just weird, freaky shit. She said it looked like he was just standing at the end of the hall watching her when I leaned down to kiss her. Again, a solid black mass that she immediately called he. She also said she was filled with immense dread when she saw him. So I end up staying in the room with her and we both fall asleep after a few hours. The next morning I was out smoking a cigarette after she had left for work and one of my neighbors from across the street comes over and starts chatting with me. He's asking me how the apartment is since it was just remodeled, how long I've lived in the city, yada yada yada. I'm like half paying attention and fully wishing this guy would fuck off when out of nowhere he looks at me and says is it still haunted. And I about swallowed my sig butt. I apparently gave him a look that answered his question because he kinda laughed and said yeah there was a meth lab that blew up there in the 90s and killed a few guys. I had an old girlfriend who lived in your building and she ended up breaking her lease because her nightmares got so bad. I just looked at him, completely awestruck and said holy shit. So we're not crazy? He thought this was simply hilarious and about laughed himself to death. Real nice guy. I told my GF what Alex saw probably a week later and she was understandably upset by the story. We lived in that apartment for about another 6 months with a few weird things happening in that time but nothing as scary as these incidents and the dark figure never made another appearance to us. Strangely enough though, we moved into the unit opposite of us, it was only a fourplex so literally across the hall, and never had any paranormal incidents in the new apartment at all. I think it's very interesting that two people I trust both saw the exact same thing at the same place and had similar feelings of dread tied to the sighting. Each one not knowing at the time of their sighting that the other was experiencing anything at all. I'm not close with the GF anymore, but I do know that both of them are still freaked out by what they saw and in that place. Thanks for reading. I've had chills running up my spine the entire time I was typing this out. 
Can't wait to go to bed, now. So this story is kind of a short one but it is a story nonetheless. So to give you an idea of the double wide I used to live in you walk into the front door and to the right is my room about 20 feet from the door and the bathroom was right in front of it. To the opposite side of the door was my parents which is about 25 foot from the door and their bathroom being right past there. So anyways at the time my bathroom didn't work and every time I had to go I would go to my parents. This particular night just felt off as I had been feeling nauseous every time I stepped into the room. Well I had to pee really bad one night and I booked it down the hallway to the bathroom as fast as I could and got finished with my business and walked slowly back to my room because I was just flat out tired. When I opened my door there was a man staring down through my window. Now there are a few things about this that startled me. The main ones being the fact that the man had glowing red eyes and everything else is just charcoal black except for his teeth. Along with the fact that there is a person staring down though my window and the window is 6 to 7 foot tall that freaked me out so I put my back against the wall and slowly backed out staring at him then ran like there was no tomorrow to my parents room where the man was then staring at me through the window. Needless to say I didn't sleep that night. My mother lived in an old adjoined flat when I was in my 20s. It was a nice old wooden place built probably in the 40s. We both worked odd shifts and often it was easier to go to her place after finishing at 3 a.m. than heading all the way home. A number of times I was there on my own overnight because she was at work. Every so often I would wake up hearing shuffling in the hallway, on the carpet. It sounded like slippers or socks. I just attributed it to my neighbor moving around and assumed I could hear them through the shared wall. When I eventually mentioned this to my mother she said yes I hear that too, I seem to wake up paralyzed later in the night when I hear it, it feels like there's something on the bed with me thinking back she obviously was experiencing sleep paralysis and didn't know what it was. The kicker is there was no neighbor, he died about two years before I first heard it. So all this time I was alone lying in the dark listening to someone walking along the hallway without the good sense to be scared. Ha! Ah. Bought one of those Christmas themed microphones, right? It was one where you could press the button and it would play North Pole radio and had all these cool sound effects and stuff. It was cute and like $5 so I bought it. Well if you hold down the button you can talk into it and when it plays back the pitch is all high and your voice sounds like a chipmunk. You all know what I mean. Anyways I'm playing with it one day a few months ago with my daughter, Sixmo at the time. She's not paying attention so I'm talking into the microphone and trying to get her to look over at me. Well I go to play it back, and instead of stopping at the end of the recording, the ambient white noise like shifted slightly and I swear to god something started to speak. Only clear word I got was my name. And like I said, it's supposed to alter your pitch higher and this voice was deep. I fucking freaked out, threw it away outside and called my boyfriend, asked him to come home early that day. Not, exactly. Paranormal, but it was awful. Was home alone with my old roommate's pit bull, Hamburger. She was very sweet, but would bark at strange noises or if she heard something outside the house. Sometimes a light growl and a few barks if she saw a mouse, rare occurrence, but hey it was an old house. Anyway, it was like 11.30pm and I was chilling in my room when she started barking. Normally a quick hey cut it out. Would hush her up, but not this time so I figured something had riled her up for real. Went out into the hall and she was looking from the living room down the hall in my direction but past me. So I looked where she was looking and couldn't see anything. Hall was mostly dark except the light from my room, halfway down the hall. Looked back at her and she whimpered for a second. Then out of nowhere she started growling and barking like I'd never heard before and ran toward me. I was not afraid of her at all and knew she'd never hurt me, but I recoiled a bit until she went a couple feet past me and continued barking aggressively at the end of the hall. She was not an aggressive dog at all, so this freaked me out. And it was definitely not a mouse, because she was looking around human head height. I went to the living room, turned on all the lights, and sat on the couch because it was nice and far from the end of the hall. Called her back to me and she sat by my side doing a low growl for the next 5 minutes. When I calmed down and wasn't feeling so alarmed anymore she refused to come with me to my room. Later that night woke up to what I swear looked like an adolescent girl in a white dress at the foot of my bed. Here's the catch though. My room at night in that house could get really dark. I shouldn't have been able to see anything as distinctly as that. Only reason I doubt what I saw is because I've suffered my entire life from what I can only refer to as night terrors. It's like sleep paralysis, but only the hallucination part. I'm fully capable of moving, and I'm only half asleep so I end up doing shit like turning all the lights on and throwing pillows at shit that isn't there. That being the case, I was completely conscious when all that with Hammy went down. And normally when I wake up to a hallucination, it's something like a giant spider or snake in my bed. 
Rarely is it a hallucinated person, and I'm almost always terrified no matter what I'm seeing. That night I wasn't afraid at all when I woke up, and it was gone by the time I turned the light on. Never told any of my roommates, and I've only told one other person before. Even writing it out I'm doubting myself. All I know is that I love the hell out of that dog, and if there was something there she put herself between me and it. Me and some friends were counselors at a music camp in Northern California, and we always stayed in this super old dorm that was a hospital at one point. My friend Nate was into those ghost hunting shows and we used to do this thing in the dorm late at night called an EVP session, basically you do an AMA with spirits, and try to get them to answer questions while recording it hoping you pick up some paranormal audio. We never took it seriously, it was mostly something we did for fun after a few drinks. Well one night we start doing the session and we start hearing some bumps and sounds in relation to the questions we ask. We are still kinda joking around, going yeah right but we can feel the room getting a little quieter. Then one of us asks what is your name? A few moments go by and we hear Nate ask that was a joke right? He had his headphones hooked into his his recorder, and we sat watching him puzzled, because he had this look on his face. He heard something we didn't. After some discussion we play back the audio through the speakers on the recorder so everyone can hear. What is your name? We hear our friend ask. We hear in a whisper but clear as a bell something we didn't hear before. I'm Timothy. I was taking a shower while my family was out. I had talked to my sister a few minutes before and she'd said she was on her way home so we could go pick up food. I was notorious in my house for taking long showers, so when I heard someone knocking on the bathroom door halfway through my shower, I assumed my sister had gotten home and was telling me to hurry up. I finished my shower, got dressed and walked into the living room calling to her, but she wasn't there. Called her to see where she'd gone and she said she was almost home. No one was home but someone had definitely knocked on the bathroom door. I do deep forest, as far from civilization as possible, camping in one experience creeped me the fuck out. It's the middle of the night, 2am roughly, traveling through a forest a couple of miles from civilization because I got a call on my sat phone saying I needed to get home immediately. I stumbled upon an old ass graveyard the latest tombstone I could read by my flashlight was 1831, and I hear a sound behind me. I whip around and there's nothing but the still unending blackness of the night. Then I hear another sound from my left. I look over there and again nothing. I think to myself I'm probably imagining it since I'm alone in a forest miles from civilization. I turn around and head back to civilization. Just as I'm about to pass the last tombstone I can see I hear a little girl giggle right in my fucking ear. Now I think I'm going crazy because shit like this doesn't happen in the real world only in horror movies. Suddenly a fucking rock hits my back. Not a pebble but an avocado sized rock. I know I'm not crazy and I just book it the fuck out of there as fast as possible. I refuse to re-enter that forest to this day. I won't sleep in my Nana's house anymore now. Even though I basically grew up in that house as a kid with zero problems. I didn't even believe in anything beforehand but this had me proper shook. I was in my 20s and hadn't been back for ages since I had moved away. But me and my mam stayed over one night visiting. I slept upstairs in the front bedroom, two single beds. Mam slept in the smaller box room that was a narrower room to the left of it. I can't remember why it was that arrangement. Nana and Grandad were in the back bedroom. I woke up randomly in the middle of the night, wide awake. Went to the bathroom, checked my phone. Saw it was after 4am ish. Tried to lie down and go to sleep and I suddenly felt really really awful. I can't describe it. I felt sick, sad and terrified all at the same time for no reason. As if you were hiding somewhere from somebody and your heart is going crazy as they walk past looking for you. I tried to close my eyes and nod off. Couldn't really get to sleep. To the left of me the bed started dipping as if someone was trying to stand on the mattress and walk across it. Two more dips one after the other to where my legs were. The mattress was actually making noise under the weight. But there was nothing there I couldn't see anything. It stopped as it got to the end of the bed. Then I kid you not the hand I had out over my blanket was touched and I thought I was going to cry or wretch, or both. I felt so sad and confused. When the terror subsided enough for me to move I burst out crying and ran into my ma'am. Trying to tell her what happened through the gasps. She was already awake. She said a spider was crawling across her arm and it woke her up. Said she heard me come back from the bathroom. She left me in her bed and got up to check the front bedroom. She told me that when she went in she felt sick and angry. The hairs on her arms were sticking up but she couldn't see anything. She came back and told me not to go in there. Of course then Nana and Grandad woke up to me crying and Grandad dismissed it saying I was dreaming. I was awake and was on my damn phone. 
My nana wasn't too bothered and said something like ah yeah I've felt and heard strange stuff for years but nothing dangerous. Couldn't believe she was only saying that now. I didn't stay over again after that. I don't know whether I got more sensitive to stuff that was already going on or that something awful started hanging around. Ma'am and Nana didn't tell Grandad and called a priest to come to the house, we're Catholic. He was told everything and checked the house. He took some photos in that front room. He took a few photos of the wall over the beds and then there was this blurry area in the middle over the headboards. He said that apparently from what he's seen before it was a sort of gate where things can get in and out. So they were obviously coming out, landing on the bed and continuing through the house. The housing estate itself is next to the biggest children's hospital in the country and he thought maybe there were a lot of confused entities passing through that didn't know where to go. So that explains what my Nana says. But also older, meaner things were coming in and out and that could have only been happening recently. My uncle told me afterwards that he stopped house sitting for them years ago because he could hear running across the house upstairs and couldn't take it anymore. Ma'am had to stay there a few more times for work and she said the night disturbances were getting more and more aggressive. More grabbing, things moving. My Nana told me she locked up the house but when she came back and unlocked the front room the iron was plugged in and red hot. The house could have burnt down. Grandad still denies everything but won't sleep without a TV or radio on, so he's afraid but won't admit it. Currently waiting for them to move house. Worked security for a local security company that was just starting up and specialized in monitoring heavy levy equipment out in the orchards. I had no radio, no gun, no mace, no flashlight, and no phone service. I was strictly there to monitor and take notes, but if anything DID happened the nearest help was 30 to 45 minutes away in town. Fast forward to a few weeks of night shifts along the levee with it being surrounded by orchards, and I was pretty comfortable at my new location with its one road in and one road out as the only entrance for a few miles. It was about 2.30 in the morning when I hear an alarm clock going off somewhere in the murky darkness. Impositioned alongside the levee in this position, O plus O with my car being the O on the right, the levee is the plus and the alarm sound coming from the O on the left. I turn my car on and drive over the levee to where the workers had a portable office container with a few chairs and a table set up and where it sounds like the alarm is coming from. As my dim high beams started to sweep across the orchard I see a dark figure multiple rows back seem to fade behind a tree quickly. I stop there and stare into the darkness barely disrupted by my posh car's headlights. Nothing moves and I can hear the alarm still going off so I get out of my car and using my phone's light, I find the culprit sat upon a white plastic table. A single small square battery powered alarm clock was singing away as my brain screamed at me to return to my car. I quickly popped the batteries out of the alarm and hopped back into my car as the silence returned to the orchards. As I was reversing out of the spot, my headlights bathed the trees in light again and the same similar shape was now three or four rows closer and this time it seemed to crouch down behind a tree. I sat there for a moment longer staring into the void before my brain screeched, what if there's more and this is the distraction? That thought encouraged me to back up onto the high part of the levee and there I waited for the next three and a half hours alone. It felt torturous. Like a thousand eyes were burrowing into every inch two of my car and soul from every angle. The quietness of an orchard is something very unsettling in the wintertime, as there's no insects or wildlife wandering about. All I could hear was silence and my pounding heart for the next three and a half hours of my shift. I almost wanted some monster to come tearing through the trees bellowing out, ha ha here I am, here to eat you. But instead I saw and heard nothing more. My morning shifter shows up late and starts casually drinking his hot cup of coffee as I give him the rundown while the sun starts to peek into the sky. I still remember the steam trail from his mug and the chirping of early birds as we decided to investigate further into the orchards. We ended up at the spot where I saw the figure and after some quick scanning he ended up spotting some really large footprints from boots that seemed to pace back and forth in a line along one row of trees. We then tracked them as they led forward towards the worker's office container and abruptly stopped near a tree while still a few rows back. Nothing more. No follow-up footprints leading forward or backwards. No vehicle tracks leading out of the dirt. No one could have gotten past me without trudging through the orchard. It was as if someone appeared, paced back and forth in a line for a few hours, walked forward, and then just disappeared without another step. We reported it to the boss and he shrugged it off saying maybe it was an elaborate prank by the construction workers, but that was one of the last shifts I worked doing security. Definitely made me more of a believer in the paranormal kind of things. When I was about 12 I used to sleep over in my friend's basement, which was finished. It was actually pretty sweet, with a pool table and fridge and couches, the whole bit. 
One night when I was lying on the couch I suddenly heard someone walking around the basement, but even though there was some light I couldn't see anyone. I knew it wasn't my friend, as I could see him still asleep on the other couch, and I knew it wasn't his parents because I would have heard them coming down the creaky steps. After staring around the room for a good 10 minutes and seeing no one, I finally fell asleep. When I told my friend about it the next day he revealed to me that the couple that owned the house before his parents died by shotgun murder slash suicide. In the basement. If I had heard the story before that I would have totally written it off as my imagination, assuming I had ever actually slept down there. As it was, I just don't know. 20 years old, taking my girlfriend home late one night on small country roads. I go to take a left turn then suddenly there are bright headlights coming through the passenger's window. She screams, I scream, we are about to be killed, and nothing happens. We don't get hit, the car just vanishes. She is hyperventilating and crying, I'm scared as hell, confused, and adrenaline is racing. We sat there 5 minutes before I could drive again. Start up the road and suddenly there are intense headlights behind us, they fly up behind us easily going 50 miles per hour faster than us. Brace to get rear-ended, and nothing. Girl is screaming so loud she is hoarse, all I hear is go, go, go. We drove the next 10 miles on little country roads at 110 miles per hour, making curves that should have sent us into ditches, with the headlights either mere feet behind us or pulling alongside but we could never see anything but lights. Then my girlfriend suddenly screamed what did you do with the fucking stars? I glanced up, not daring to look away from the road very long, and the sky was black. Not moonless night black, I mean gone black. I know how crazy it sounds but I am driving with the gas pedal on the floor at three times the safe speed, scared to death, with a screaming girl beside me and distinctly remember watching the trees and the headlights to figure out if everything literally vanished, ceased to exist once my car's headlights were past it because looking out the passenger's window things seemed to just pop and vanish. She curled up in her seat and passed out. There was a sharp 90 degree turn ahead with a huge, deep gully just past it and there was no way we could make it at our speed. I don't know why but when I saw the lights beside me I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could. The lights zipped past us and vanished, the stars were back and somehow sitting there I just knew it was over. I woke her up, and she just kind of oozed into her seat and quietly asked me to take her home. We didn't talk about it at all, she just got out and ran inside. I sat in her driveway and trembled for 10 minutes. I was terrified of going home the way we had come so I numbly drove 20 minutes in the wrong direction and slept in the parking lot of a truck stop because there were people around 24 hours a day. My girlfriend would not return my phone calls for two days, I finally got her by calling her mom, who was as nice as ever. Told my girlfriend I really wanted to talk about what had happened, she said it never happened. In the driest, most emotionless voice that I can still hear 30 years later. We never discussed it and three troubled months later broke up, never discussed that either, just quit talking. I have never heard of anyone else seeing odd lights and I've never seen them again but something was out there with us that night. Maybe not super crazy, but a few years ago I was performing in a musical at our local theater, which used to have a jail cell in the basement. For years people have speculated that it's haunted, to the point where a ghost hunting TV show came and filmed there, I don't know if they ever found anything. I was waiting backstage, about to go on for one of my scenes. Suddenly I hear a woman scream coming from the large elevator used to carry equipment and set pieces up to the stage, which goes directly to the basement. It's about 30 feet away and sounds almost melodramatic, like from a movie. I don't know how to describe it other than detached or disembodied, just kind of floated in the still air of the old theater. Like you could tell it didn't have a body. But I know the show, no one screams at that point on stage, and the rest of the theater is purposely kept quiet so as not to interrupt the show, nor would anyone be hanging out in the elevator. It couldn't have come from outside, as the theater is insulated against sound pollution, you can't even hear the siren of an ambulance go by on the street. I looked at the only two other people backstage with me, and they said they heard it too. I went on stage to sing some goofy song like 30 seconds later, but needless to say I was pretty creeped out going out there. Also weird anecdote, one of the women who heard the scream with me passed away mysteriously a few months later. Probably not related, but I remember at the time she calmed me down, I don't like ghosts, by saying there's nothing to fear, she's just expressing herself like anyone else would. Those were the last words she ever said to me. My cousin, my best friend and I broke into an abandoned building back in 2010, it was an abandoned mental hospital in PA called Penhurst that was actually featured on Ghost Adventures. We were about 20 minutes away and decided to go there. It was closed down in the 80s because of abuse to patients and they literally just up and left. Everything is still there. Books, typewriters, desks, Lessons written on the chalkboards in the Rockwell building, 
the school building. Anyway the property has about 6 to 8 different buildings and a large administrative building, most were boarded up but if you can get into one, they had a tunnel system that connected all of them. We got in through the school slash sleeping quarters building up a rusted fire escape and second story window. It's pretty wild in there. Books and magazines from the 80s on the floor, old desks with names carved in them. We explore for a while and finally find the stairs leading to the basement, we throw on our respirators, asbestos, and break out the flashlights. We get to the tunnel system and are greeted with a three-foot high pile of red and white old jumpsuits that I imagine were uniforms of the patients right next to an old metal hospital bed with chewed up straps which set the mood nicely. So we are walking down the hall and the temperature drops, it was July in PA and very hot and humid at the time, it got to the point where we could see the sweat steaming off our bodies, as we are walking in with what I believe is myself in the middle and my cousins and friend on either side I hear a growl and hiss combined, it was a guttural sound that's hard to explain, I assume it was my friend clearing his throat so I shine my flashlight next to me and no one is there. He's actually in the middle and I'm on the end against the wall. Before I have time to even react to tell them we hear a door slam shut down the tunnel hall, these tunnels are long as hell and echo for a long time, it was so loud you could physically feel the vibration of it. All hell breaks loose and my cousin and friend start running in the dark back where we camp. I follow and we run up the stairs to the first floor. I tell them about the growl and they turn white because they thought it was me who made the noise. We got the fuck out pretty quickly after that. I've got tons more from when I lived in the Philippines too. Tried going back in 2015 and found out they turned on of the buildings into a haunted attraction which is pretty lame and disrespectful. They had security and since I was an adult at that point I figured a trespassing fine wouldn't be too hot. Mine dates to the year 2017. We have three rooms in one living room. In my family, we don't have rooms assigned to us. I used to sleep in the last room of the house, and we call it Mundirwala Camera, or the temple room. That's where we have our small temple. We never kept any light on, so everything was as dark as a coal mine. I was sleeping, and then suddenly I woke up because it felt someone had touched my thigh. I could feel the lingering effects of the touch on my leg. I couldn't understand what was happening as I was suddenly awoken out of a deep slumber. I blinked my eyes, but the room was so dark that all I could see were orbs that form when you can't see properly or shut your eyes too tightly. I tried to go back to sleep, but somehow, I couldn't. My heartbeat was insanely high, and it felt wrong. I decided to go and check if my brother was playing a prank on me. He is not someone who does that, but I was ready for any sane explanation. He slept in the adjacent room. When I checked, he was dead asleep. I decided to sleep in that room because I wouldn't be able to sleep alone. As soon as I lay down and switched off the light, mind you I was awake, someone scratched my hair and feet, together. This was it for me. I got up, woke my brother up, asked him again if he did all that, and he was confused. He asked me to go back to sleep. I decided to not take any risk and told my parents. My dad asked me a few questions, but my mom cut him off and told me it must be a mouse. I slept with my parents that night. I was 21 at that time. Till now, I cannot sleep alone. It happened about 5 years ago when I was like 11. I live in a Singapore hub which is is basically a building with like different levels and each level having a few houses. My room's window was facing the corridor and I was just merrily watching YouTube and packing my bag at night for school the next day. Heard a knock on my window and dumbass me thought it was a good idea to look at what it was. I didn't see much but I'm easily scared by many things so I freaked out a lot. What I saw was a really skinny finger with a long ass nail, at least 15 centimeters 6 inches, long. My eyes widened and I froze and so I just looked down, closed my eyes, covered my ears and yelled for my dad. Used to read horror stories and thought that people were so dumb to just freeze and not run away when they get scared but I realized why at that moment when it happened to me. My dad was drunk and asleep in the living room so I had to stand in fear calling for him for like a minute straight and throughout I could hear the knocking on my window getting louder and louder. Fortunately my dad finally woke up and came into my room. Couldn't sleep alone that night. I still sleep in the same room today and sometimes I get chills thinking about it when I'm about to sleep. Oh man, I have a few stories but one still freaks me, and at the very least, my dad, out. Long story short, I grew up in the middle of nowhere with not very much to do for teens. There was an old churchyard people thought was haunted, so when I came home from college on break, The churchyard got brought up and we all wanted to experience it for ourselves. There is so much lore to its history, it's hard to tell what's fact or fake, however some truths were that it was one of the oldest graveyards for our area, and there once was a church, but it had burned down way before my family came about. That particular night, we walked around, 
not really doing much, and a friend decided we should stand in a circle with our backs facing each other and turn out our lights. After turning the lights back on, and without thinking, I just started walking away from the group, into near pitch blackness toward three headstones. Before I got too far away, a friend grabbed my arm and tried getting my attention, but I was solely focused on that area. Eventually he got me to turn back to the group and we walked around so we were on higher ground, behind those three headstones. That's when me and the other girl noticed something, odd, watching us. I saw odd because I honestly have no clue how to describe it. I went very calm. She freaked. She ended up leaving shortly after that, but I was with the second group and we left a couple of minutes after them. While walking out, in my mind question mark slash in reality I saw a woman in this very detailed white dress with a old half lace veil watching us, and that's when I freaked. We later met up with the group and the girl who left said she saw the same woman, and described her to the very same detail I did, which scared the boys. I drove home, completely shook, and tried to sleep with all of my bedroom lights on. The second I felt okay enough to close my eyes, a rough woman's voice whispered it's okay to turn the lights off, now. I almost puked. My dad walked by my room three hours later to me shaking in my bed, totally unable to sleep. Scared the daylights out of him too. Whatever the fuck that was, it really made me question a few things. Growing up I always had a lot of weird experiences happen, but I had a very overactive imagination so I never thought too much about it. But this memory stands out so distinctly because it wasn't just me who saw this figure, but two others as well. I moved into my house at four years old. It was a four-bedroom house newly built at the time, 1999, with one of the rooms placed right off the main living room area. For whatever reason, my sister and I always got creeped out by that room. Whenever we were home, we would always make sure the door was shut, it was just a guest room, and we would tell each other how much that room creeped us out. This feeling always persisted in my sister and I and it became a joke between us. When we got a little bit older and started staying home alone, we would still always shut that door and joke around with each other about it. Fast forward to high school. I'm 16 years old at this time, I'm home alone and I walk by this room and the door was open. As I walk in front of the door, I suddenly freeze. Out of the corner of my eye I see a black shadowy figure sitting on the bed facing me. I turn my head and he's still there. I couldn't make much details out, it was pretty dark in the room, but I could see an outline of a 1920 style suit and hat, with a shadowy black briefcase sitting on the bed. I quickly shut the door, opened it again and he was gone. I didn't tell my family about it because I didn't want them thinking I was crazy, but I immediately left the house and went for a walk until my parents were home. About six months later, my sister calls me in a panic. She said that she just saw a figure in the room. I was three houses down so I immediately sprint over and find her crying in our front yard. She tells me that she went down to close the door in the guest room when she saw a man standing next to the bed. I immediately got chills and asked her what did this man look like? She said she couldn't see too clearly but he looked like he was wearing an old style suit and at had I asked was there anything else you noticed she looked at me and said, he was holding something in his left hand. Was it a briefcase? My sister looked nervously at me and said I think it was, but how do you know that? So I had to explain to her what I saw and that really freaked her out. I told her she couldn't tell our parents because they were fighting a lot lately, clearly leading to a divorce, and I didn't want them thinking we couldn't handle staying at home alone. She agreed she wouldn't. We never talked about it again. Fast forward two years later. I'm 18 and a senior in high school. My parents are separated but too poor to move out of the house. My mom sleeps in an upstairs room and my dad sleeps in the guest room. I thought about telling him about what I saw, but my dad has always been a staunch believer that ghosts aren't real. I'm sitting in the living room with my sister and I was telling her how my friend keeps hearing pool balls clack in the middle of the night at his house. My sister jokingly says maybe his house is haunted. We laugh and then my dad pipes in from across the room well you know our house is haunted too right? I figure my dad is messing with us because he has always said that ghosts aren't real. I make some smart ass remark about how he doesn't believe in that and I notice he's not laughing, he's dead serious. I ask how do you know? And he said because I woke up to a man standing above my bed last night. My sister and I nervously darted eyes toward each other. Dad, what did this man look like? I asked quietly. Well, he was a dark shadowy figure, but I could tell he was dressed nicely from a different time. Like he was wearing an old 1920s gangster style suit with a round brimmed hat. He also had something in his hand. Was it a briefcase? My sister asked nervously. The color from my dad's face drained how did you know that? My sister and I then tell my dad about our separate experiences and we're all pretty spooked. 
we agree that the guy must not mean any harm because he hasn't hurt us. To this day this single story makes me believe in ghosts. The creepiest thing is that we later find out that the newly built housing development was built in an old farmer's field. The field was about a mile away from one of Al Capone's safe houses he would escape to if things in Chicago were getting too hot. No idea if it's related, but that's the only explanation I have. The main house of the place me and my partner rent is on the second floor. There is one set of long stairs leading down to ground level from the front door and another set of stairs leading down from the back door. We can always tell when we have visitors because you can always hear the footsteps ascending and the handrail clanging as they make their way up. A few years ago, in the middle of the day, my partner and I are just chilling on the couch in the lounge room aimlessly scrolling through our phones or whatever, when suddenly we hear the sound of someone slash something charging up our back set of stairs. Now this thing was heavy and fast and the sound of it coming up those stairs was thunderous. Our cat who was laid out on the lounge room floor in the warm sun, stares out through the kitchen to the back door, jumps up and arches it back the way they do when they feel threatened. My partner and I look at each other completely panicked. I immediately leap up thinking a home invader is about to burst through the back door and murder us. Adrenaline kicks in, I'm all amped up ready to defend the castle, but thinking I was about to get killed in the process because the weight of the footsteps sounded like someone thrice my size. I sprint to the back door but there's no one there. Look out the back window, nothing. Scan the fenced off backyard, not a trace. This whole event happened in the span of 10 seconds at most. It only took me a couple seconds to reach the back door and it would be impossible for someone to escape running back down the stairs or jumping off the back balcony, make it across the yard and scale the fence in that amount of time, in broad daylight without being seen or heard. It was honestly as though the largest person you can imagine sprinted up the back stairs and disappeared into thin air the moment they reached the top. I'd never experienced anything quite like it before or since, but still think about it often because of how abrupt and mysterious it was, the lingering sense of menace after it occurred and the fact that I just don't have any explanation for it. Okay well here goes, it's gonna be a long one. My childhood home was built in the 60s so not too old, I was a kid in the early 2000s. Weird stuff happened all over the house that my parents continuously brushed off as nothing, so when things would happen, i.e. one time during a sleepover w some of my friends, our electric keyboard piano turned on in the room next to us and was playing a tune and we all ran to my bedroom, I was kind of desensitized to it. However, there was one reoccurring experience I had for years that always stuck with me. My brother and I shared a room until I was seven. I then moved into what used to be the nursery room on my own and my youngest brother took my place with my other brother. Ever since I moved into that room I had nightmares almost every night. I would go to bed normally, then would wake up every night after a few hours of sleeping. Something in me would just freeze. The first night this happened I was facing away from the wall into my room. I saw a woman who was very tall in a white dress with billowing sleeves and long black hair standing over me. She had this blue light sort of aura around her that would light up my room. It took everything in me to slam my eyes shut and just squeeze them closed until I knew she was gone, then went back to sleep. I always slept facing the wall since that night. It still happened, I would continuously wake up, be facing the wall and just frozen in terror knowing she was there. I would break out in such hot sweats it was unbearable but I refused to move. I began covering my head with the covers until I got too hot I couldn't breathe, but I just could not look at her again. But I always knew she was there, looking over me. My room would always have this weird glow against the wall and I knew she was gone when it went away. I always kept this to myself, I figured it would just be another thing my parents would brush off. This happened almost every other night from the ages of 7 to 12 when my parents got divorced and we finally moved out. It became just a normal nightmare slash occurrence I would suffer through then go back to sleep. I remember in my new houses I would dread going to sleep knowing those nightmares were destined to start up again. Weird thing is, they never did. I can still remember them so vividly from my childhood. But I have not had another single dream slash experience with that woman since I moved out. Fast forward and a Conjuring movie had come out. There was a scene in that movie where the mother sort of resembled the woman I used to see. I was watching the movie with my mom at our house and I decided what the hell, and brought it up to her, how I used to see this lady standing over my bed almost every night in our old house when I got my own room. My mom went completely pale in the face and asked, did she have a white dress and long black hair? And for some reason as soon as she asked that I broke out in chills and tears came to my eyes. You saw her too? Apparently when I was a baby and they had first moved into that house, I would sleep in that same room which then was the nursery room. My mom said she used to wake up to nightmares every night to that woman standing over my crib, and would then turn to my mom and say go get your baby, to which my mom would run to my room to make sure I was okay. 
I get chills even typing this out now, there was definitely a woman in that house. When I was about 16 years old my friend and I were walking down a side road to get to my house. As we were walking I noticed a woman standing under a street light near the end of the road and pointed it out to my friend. We thought it was weird that a woman wearing a white dress was just standing under the light in the middle of the night and we were going to go see what was the matter with her. When we walked a few more feet in her direction however I felt an overwhelming sense of dread and decided we needed to take a different way to my house. My friends generally listen to me when it comes to stuff like this so he agreed and we walked the long way. We would go out there every night to check and every night there she was, a woman in a white dress standing under a street light not moving. She was never there during the day, there was no signs or anything near that area that could look like a woman, and I never felt anything any other time we were out there. We did backyard wrestling and she was near the spot we would use for hardcore matches. One night he told his GF about it and she said we should drive down there since I could never force myself to walk down to the end. I was against this but they and my GF talked me into it so we piled into her car and went on an adventure. As we went around the curve on the road we saw here. The woman in white standing under the street light. We all saw her so at least I knew my friend and I weren't crazy. His GF drives down to the end of the road and we see her the entire time until we get to the light. Once we reach where she was we couldn't see her. We scan the tree line looking for movement in case she had jumped into the trees and we missed it but the leaves are still and the night is quiet. We turn around and start to drive away and as we leave we look behind us and she's there again. Just popped up out of nowhere. I proceed to freak out and tell everyone we need to get the out of here but my friend has to use the bathroom bad. I tell him to hurry up so we can leave and we stop to where she can't see us. There we find a burned up car and my friend says he's gonna piss on it in case she died in it. I beg him not to but this time he doesn't listen and he proceeds to urinate on the car. That's the last thing I remember before opening my eyes 15 minutes later lying in my GF's lap a few miles from where we were. They said once my friend started urinating on the car my eyes rolled back in my head and I started saying they're coming for us we need to hide. Over and over again. Not too sure about that last part honestly because, as I said, I blacked out but that's what they told me. Anyhow, that's my story of the woman in white. I've never been back down that road after dark in 21 years. Not sure if this experience was paranormal or not but it still creeps me out. My partner and I wanted to try camping out in my, very small, car so we drove out a few hours from the city. It was getting close to dusk so we parked the car in a clearing near a drive-in campsite. We had a bonfire cooked some food, and by the time we were eating it was pitch black outside. We decided to settle in and sleep in my car. My car is very small, and I was sleeping in the back with the seats lowered. I was curled up and had a hard time falling asleep, I doze off and wake throughout the night. Just around past midnight, I was wide awake and couldn't sleep so I was staring out the rear window at the night sky. I saw a flashing beam of light in the woods that would flicker on and off and disappear for a while before shining again. It looked almost like lightning flashes, except it seemed to be in the trees. At first I thought it was people walking through the woods but it kept repeating throughout the night. I was awake for a few hours and the light kept shining in patterns, coming from the same direction. It would stop for a long time, but then flash again like lightning. Mind you, the woods are dense and there are no campers in the direction where the beam was coming from. Also, it seemed to be shining towards the sky so it doesn't make sense for it to be someone's flashlight. The next morning we were heading out around 6 am. As I was driving out I kept my eyes peeled for any possible light sources, but there was nothing but trees. There were train tracks with a crossing sign on our way out, and I considered whether the light may have been reflecting off of them, but the location of the sign and the direction of the lights didn't make sense. To this day, I'm still wondering what the hell that was. That night was definitely one of the worst sleeps I've had in a while.